I have a real classic album I'm looking at today. It's by Pink Floyd and it's called Animals from 1977. And in this video I'll be discussing five amazing facts about this piece of music that many of you will be unaware of. Now did you know that Pink Floyd's Animals wasn't just influenced by George Orwell's Animal Farm, but that one of its most iconic images nearly turned into a disaster? Well stay tuned and find out more. It's all coming up next on the Album Review Channel. Welcome all and thanks for rejoining me. And today we're diving into five things you probably didn't know about Pink Floyd's Animals. And trust me, even if you were a hardcore fan, there's bound to be something that will surprise you. I certainly hope so anyway. Joining me and today we're diving into five things you probably didn't know about Pink Floyd's Animals. And trust me, even if you were a hardcore fan, there's bound to be something that will surprise you. I certainly hope so anyway. So let's jump right in with the first thing you might not know. And that's starting with the album's Orwellian roots. So Roger Walters drew some serious inspiration from George Orwell's Animal Farm to create quite a savage critique of capitalism in animals. And when you look at the tracks, the parallels are pretty obvious. Pigs, dogs, sheep, they all represent different social classes, much like Orwell's critique of society in his novel. He was using them as metaphors for the ruling elite at the time, the middle class and the working class in Britain. Very dark stuff indeed. Waters was frustrated with the social divisions he saw were around him. And it was like a light bulb went off in his head and he used the album to channel that energy. But that's what gave animals that, that cynical, biting edge. It wasn't just the music, it was the social commentary that was set to some incredible guitar work by David Gilmour. Now, some have rightly argued that this was possibly the start of Pink Floyd's more politically charged era. But that's just one part of this amazing story of the album. Now let's talk about that famous album cover, Battersea Power Station with the pig floating in the sky. But did you know that the shoot almost caused a major air disaster? No, I didn't either. So here's what happened. They had this huge inflatable pig, affectionately known as algae, ready for the shoot. But the pig broke free from its moorings. Somehow. I mean, imagine a giant pig floating into Heathrow Airport's airspace. But that's exactly what happened. Flights had to be diverted and the pig ended up miles away in a farmer's field. It gets worse. And get this, they actually hired a marksman to shoot the pig down. But on that particular day, they didn't use him. Talk about bad timing. But despite the chaos, the incident just added to Pink Floyd's legacy. And that cover became one of the most iconic images in rock history. Speaking of iconic moments, let's talk about the creative tension that was brewing within the band during this album. If you've followed Pink Floyd for a while, you've probably heard about the tension between Roger Waters and David Gilmour. Well, Animals was a, a turning point for that. This album marked a shift where Waters started taking the reins and Gilmore found himself with less creative input, to be fair. In fact, Gilmore was barely involved in writing this album and liked their earlier works, for example, I Wish You Were Here. Gilmore even expressed his frustration in interviews, mentioning how he felt left out during this period. Now, it's fascinating to see how this tension started bubbling under the surface, but eventually leading to their later conflicts. And isn't it wild to think that the music we love was born really out of such tensions? It's really like watching a, a great drama unfold. Now, before Sheep became the song we know and love, it was originally a track called Raving and Drooling. 
I know. A title that definitely fit the raw, chaotic vibe of the live shows at the time. But this track never made it onto any album, until Animals. That's when Waters reworked it and used new lyrics turning sheep to fit the album's themes of class struggle. Now, this transformation from raving to drooling to sheep is pretty wild when you compare the two. The original version was more primal, but with Animals, Waters sharpened it into a a scathing critique of societal conformity. It is fascinating to see how Pink Floyd tested their ideas on stage before perfecting them in the studio, and Sheep is a prime example of that. Speaking of contributions, we can't talk about animals without mentioning the overlooked member, Richard Wright. Now, Richard Wright wasn't heavily involved in the songwriting on animals, but his contributions were crucial to the album's sound. His atmospheric style with his keyboards and synth work added that eerie, spacious feel that runs throughout the album, particularly on tracks like Dogs and Sheep. Now, unfortunately, this was one of the last albums where Wright really had a significant role before the tensions within the band led to his diminished involvement and also, eventually, his firing. It's kind of a bittersweet moment in Floyd's history. Without Wright's input... The sound of animals wouldn't have been anywhere near as powerful or as haunting. So there you have it. Five things you didn't know about Pink Floyd's animals. Which of these facts surprised you the most? Was it the Orwell connection? The runaway pig? Or maybe the story behind sheep? Let me know in the comments. I do love to hear what you guys think out there. If you've enjoyed this video... I've got another video here for you to have a look at, which also tells quite a a poignant story. I'm sure it's one that you're going to enjoy.